A day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountain, a people come, and this is the second army, a people come great and strong, like of whom has never been, nor will there ever be any such after them. Even for many successive generations, a fire devours after them, and behind them a flame, a flame burns. The land is like the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run. With a noise like chariots, over mountain tops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them the people wreathe in pain. All faces are drained in color. They run like a mighty man. They climb up the wall, the men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run and to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grew dark. And the stars diminished their brightness. The Lord gives voice before His army. For His camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes His word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? The second army is a different army, isn't it? Whose army is it? It's the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you come to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, you will find that, there is, that this army is predicted, is shown here, Jesus coming as a great conqueror. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 11 onwards, the prophet writes, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed in, in a white robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the, the, of the great God that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and the flesh of those who sit on them and the flesh of all people free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Can you see in, ver in, that, in, the, in that final verse, verse 19, the clash of the two armies? Why Joel, if we go back to Joel, I was planning to preach on the whole book of Joel today, now why I will be able to accomplish it? I'll have to finish it next Sabbath. Why does Joel, in verse, chapter 2, verse 12, include the following words? Chapter 1 presents the army of the enemy coming against the church of God to destroy it and annihilate the church. Chapter 2 presents the army of Christ coming and we also are told that this is a terrible day. Why? Shouldn't the Lord say, who be scared of that army, but we have, be happy that I am coming? Why, friends? If you come to verse 12, you will find what the Lord wants us, how He wants us to react. react. Verse 12 says, Now therefore say, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, 
with weeping and with mourning. Why, friends? I ask you, friend, why does the Lord ask his people? He tells them, look, the army of locusts is coming. Weep. Rend your clothes. Cry. Gather all the people. Make a fasting. And then he says, look, my army is coming. My angels. They are coming like flaming fire. And then he tells them, weep. Rend your clothes. Fast. Why? Very simple, friends. The church is not ready. The church is neither ready for the attack from the enemy, and neither the church is ready to receive the army of the Lord. Let me ask you a question. If the army of Jesus came today, now, before I say this, what is the purpose of the army of Christ coming? What is the purpose of the army of Christ coming? Is it, is it to destroy his children? No, the opposite. The purpose of the army of Jesus is to save us from the onslaught of the enemy, friends. But his children are not ready. Is this function working? It's not good. One, two, one. Oh, oh this, this is funny. Yeah. I, I'm talking with this one and this one is catching me. Friends, why is in both cases the reaction the same? Very simple. Do you think that the church is ready when we love our bank accounts more than we love Jesus? Do you think that the church is ready for the return of Christ when we love our fashion more than we love Jesus? Do you think that the church is ready for the return of Christ when we love movies, television, and entertainment more than what we love Jesus? Do you think, friends, that the church of Christ is ready for the coming of His army, for the, for the devouring fire, for the face of God? Do you think that we are ready when we spend most time satisfying self than what we spend developing the image of Christ in us? Do you think that the church is ready, friends? Do you think? If Jesus came tonight, do you think that we would be ready to go home, friends? And you know why we are not ready? Because of what the army of Satan has done within us. Do you love the sacrifice of Jesus above all things? Do you love his death on the cross so much that you would be willing to die for him? Do you love his sacrifice so much and you want to become so much more like him? that you would be willing to put everything at the stake, but not your relationship with Him? Would you be willing to lose the world and to count it as rubbish, but to gain the knowledge of Christ? Do you understand what I say, friends? Are we in a state to be translated to heaven? Or are we playing at being Christians and thinking that we are ready when we are playing a double life? What will you be doing when you leave church today? What you will be you watching tonight? How are you dealing with your loved ones? How are you treating your people? How are your business dealing 